Learning chord changes, important but often frustrating. Today we've got some strategies to get you learning chord changes and remembering them to avoid the abject terror of getting lost. Hopefully. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do consider subscribing and hit the like button to help you learn the ch 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 changes but today we're going to turn and face the strain and start to talk about some strategies to learn chord changes, make more sense out of them, so you can remember them and play through the tunes and improvise more comfortably, more confidently. Now, before we go on, this is assuming, before we learn the chord changes, I want you to know the melody. I want you to know the tune and any lyrics, if applicable. Meaning if it's a song that actually has lyrics, learn them. You don't have to make up your own lyrics to wane shorter tunes. Though that could be fun. Don't do it. So today we're going to be talking about chord changes, assuming you already know the tune, the melody, and any lyrics. Also, I do encourage you to memorize chord changes when you can. They're going to help you improvise for sure. But don't let anyone tell you in order to be a true jazz musician, whatever that means in this year, you have to have X number of tunes memorized. That's silly. It's not 1955 anymore. The average American these days thinks Gershwin is the name of designer eyewear, and being the hippest guy at the jam session is not a career. Let's not create so many rules that we ruin a perfectly good hobby. Syntax. Trying to memorize a random series of letters and numbers. B7, A9. It's a losing proposition. It's like trying to play Battleship without the benefit of the white pegs to help you keep track. Here's a test to show you what I mean. I'm going to list a random series of words, and I want you to remember them in the order if you can. Art, rat, tailor, fight, pepper, swift, television, ghost, eight. Now list those words back to me in order. Go. Oh dear. The list of random words lacks something our brain sorely desires. Syntax, order creates meaning in which we can see patterns which our brain loves. So now let's give the list order, or syntax. Taylor Swift ate a rat on live TV while fighting the ghost of Art Pepper. See, now it makes sense. Now in order to understand the syntax, of course, we have to understand their function, like language. We need to know nouns, verbs, adjectives. What are the chords or words doing? Now to better understand this, we need to understand Roman numeral analysis. Now, often overlooked by jazz historians, the ancient Romans actually had a highly sophisticated system of jazz analysis. It arose from actually senatorial confusion over the third emperor Caligula's decree that he wanted an empire of swingers. Luckily for us, this misunderstood decree resulted in a system of analyzing chords and their function we now call Roman numeral analysis. Now, this is where we label chord by its function and its quality. So we stop seeing chords as a random series of letters and numbers, but as their function in which we can see patterns our brains can more easily recognize. And that's going to help a lot in remembering and understanding jazz tunes. So how does it work? Well, first, the Roman numeral identifies the scale degree of the chord's root. Let's take a look at C major. The chord built off the first scale degree we label as Roman numeral 1, or I, as in... I understand this. Now, if we build a chord off the second scale degree in the key of C, we call it the two chord. Third scale degree, we call it the three chord, and it keeps going all the way to the seventh scale degree. We don't call it the eighth after that. We just, we're back to the one chord, or the I chord, as in I'm getting it. Now, Roman numerals also tell us the chord's quality. Uppercase Roman numerals, major chords. Lowercase Roman numerals, minor chords. So back to our example in C major, if we build chords off each scale degree by stacking triads or consecutive thirds, skipping a little note, we create major and minor chords within the key. 
Third, Roman numeral analysis tells us any extensions and alterations to those chords. So if we add a seventh to these chords, another little triad on top, we create more color and also then we really get into the function. These colors and these extra notes have tension and often want to pull to other chords, creating more of a function, a syntax for these chords. So perhaps the most important functions we need to know are the one chord, the home bass. Now it can actually change throughout the tune if it modulates or it changes key. But in general, the one chord is the home base. It's what our ear establishes as the resting point or often the starting point the chords either move away from or want to come back to. The five seven or the dominant seven chord. If we build a chord, including the seventh off the fifth scale degree, we call it the dominant. Why this is important is this chord has notes that are a half step away from the root and the third of the one chord of the home key. So it creates tension that wants to pull back home. And this function is critical to Western music. Another common chord you're going to hear about all the time and you have in my videos is the two chord. It's what we call predominant. It often, not always, but more often than not, leads to the dominant. So that's why we always hear two, five, then often one. Two is the predominant leading to the dominant and the dominant often wants to pull home to one. But in jazz, often it doesn't, which we'll talk about another time. So by recognizing the 251, instead of thinking, for instance, in a melatonin, the second phrase, instead of thinking C minor 7, F7, B flat 6, we're thinking 251. It's showing us the function, not just a random series of chords that don't relate to each other. So how do we put this into practice? Well, I'm going to be honest. There's a lifetime of study in Roman numeral analysis or learning chords or chord functions and theory. That's why this is an amazing hobby. It can last your entire life. But to begin with, let's learn diatonically the chords of a given key. And by diatonically, I mean within the key without any alterations. So a great way to do that is with an exercise called diatonic sevens, where we build chords on each scale degree within a key without any alterations to begin with. And you can find this for free. The PDF is part of our free fundamentals book. I'll put a link down below. We have the diatonic sevens for every major and minor key. All yours for free. So here's the exercise. Listen once to building diatonic sevens in the key of C. <laughs> Now, play it again, and while you're playing it, don't think of the notes. Think of the Roman numeral, the chord function in your head as you're playing. So think major 1, minor 2, minor 3, so on and so forth. Taking it one step beyond, let's also alter directions, and all these exercises are in the Fundamentals book, where we go up one, down the other, starting on the seventh, creating beautiful voice leading, or a more linear melodic progression to the chords rather than big disjunct leaps. Now again, play it, but think the Roman numerals in your head while you're playing this exercise. So this will help you build technique and train your ears and mind, which are really the same thing. Now, this is diatonic. This is within the key. Eventually, we will start to alter this and change the rules and step outside of the key with creating some more tension, more color. But in the meantime, we need to learn the basis, the diatonic, before we can hear what's being altered. Now, you're going to have questions, and I will do my best to answer. In the meantime, start learning your diatonic sevens in at least a couple of major keys. The minor keys are quite different. Now, I will see you very soon. In the meantime, go practice, you little scamp. Get to it. Get now. You hear?